Hi everyone, welcome to this lesson where today I'm showing you how to graph systems of inequalities. So before this video, you should have watched the one where it was just graphing one inequality on the coordinate plane, and now we're gonna be graphing a system, which means we're gonna have two inequalities on a coordinate plane together. So let's take a look and see what happens. So for this system, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna graph the first one in blue, and then I'm gonna go ahead and graph the second one in red so we really see what's happening. So the first inequality here says y is greater than or equal to negative x plus two. So I'm gonna go ahead and plot my y-intercept of two. I'm gonna plot my slope of one. So I'm gonna graph it as if there was an equal sign. I look at the inequality. It says greater than or equal to, which means it's going to be a solid line, right? It would have been a closed circle on a number line. So on a coordinate plane, it's a solid line. So now for shading, it says y is greater than. So I look at my y-axis. Where does y get greater? y gets greater up at the top. That's where y always gets greater. So that's going to be the side of my graph that I'm going to shade in. The entire length, all the way up to that line. Okay, so now I'm going to switch over and I'm going to graph my second inequality in red. So the second one has a y-intercept at negative 2 and a slope of positive 2. So I'm going to go ahead and do my slope of positive 2. Whoops. And I look at my inequality symbol. It says y is less than. Less than would have been an open circle on a number line. So what we should remember is that means it's a dashed line on the coordinate plane. So I'm gonna go ahead and connect my red line as a dashed line, and it says y is less than. Well, y gets less down here. Now here's the thing, when you go to shade in the second half, you have to kind of imagine that the first graph that we did doesn't exist. Like don't stop at any boundary lines, things like that. You have to shade the entire side that you circled of that red dashed line. And you can automatically see what happens here. I mean, look how cool that is the two graphs overlap. So the teal and the pink basically overlap and make that dark purple region. Now, anything that's in that dark purple region is part of the solution, any of the ordered pairs. But here's something we have to know. The solution to the system is the overlap that's either in the purple region or on the solid line touching the purple but if it's on the dashed line touching the purple, it's not part of the solution, okay? So um, I could say that 3, 1 is definitely a solution to the system because it's in the overlap section, okay? The overlap section is where the solution is. But 3, 3, this point up here is definitely not. It's on the dashed line. Something on the solid line would be good, like 4, negative 2, 4, negative 2 is definitely a point that's in the solution. As long as it's in the overlap region or it's on the solid line, that's touching the shaded, the overlap region. So a point like 0, 2 up here, that's not part of the solution because it's not in the purple area. Next one, x is greater than negative 1. So that means on the x-axis at negative 1, it's a vertical line. It says greater, so that means it's going to be dashed. And then remember, if it's just x, that means we focus on the x-axis. So where does x get greater? x gets greater to the right. This is where x values get greater. So that's going to be the side of my graph that I'm going to shade in. The entire side where all the x values are greater than that dashed line. Okay, I'm going to switch my color over to red now and graph y is less than or equal to negative 3. So that means on the y-axis at negative 3, it would be a horizontal line. If it's less than or equal to, we know that that means it's a solid. And remember, when you do the second inequality, you have to pretend like the first one just doesn't even exist. Just don't even pay any attention to it. It says y is less than. So I have to focus on my y-axis. This is where y gets less than. So that is going to be the side of the graph that I'm going to shade in the whole way. And you can instantly see where the overlap section is. So again, any point that is in the purple section, this overlap section, so let's say four, negative four, this point here, is definitely in the solution. Anything on the line, like four, negative three, is definitely in the solution. But if it's on the dashed part, it is definitely not in the solution set. 
okay, next two, y is less than or equal to negative x minus 1, y-intercept of negative 1, slope of negative 1. I see it says less than or equal to, so I know that means I need to do a solid line. Remember, the moment you see equal to, it's going to be a solid. It says y is less than. Well, y gets less down here, so that's going to be the side of the graph that I'm going to shade. all the way up to the line. Okay, now I'm gonna switch over to blue and graph my second equation. So y-intercept at positive three, but still a slope of negative one. And what we should remember is that when equations or inequalities in this case have the same slope, we know the lines are gonna be parallel. And this one says y is greater. Well, y gets greater up here. So that means I'm gonna shade this side of that line. And now I talked about the solution being in the overlap, but when you look at this situation here, there actually is no overlap. The pink is completely separate from the blue. They don't make purple. So this is when it's no solution. Now what I don't want us to think is I don't want us to think, oh, every time there's parallel lines, then it's no solution. Because let's take a look at this last example. So first inequality, I'm gonna create a graph in blue. So y-intercept at negative three, slope of one half. It says greater than, so that's a dashed line. It says y is greater, y gets greater up here. So I'm going to go ahead and shade in this whole part of my graph. So this is y is greater than 1 half x minus 3. And then I'm going to switch over to red. So y-intercept of 1, same slope. Now notice I'm actually graphing right over the shaded region. We've never seen that yet. Um, so that's interesting. And then it's saying y is also greater than. Well, y gets greater still up here. So look what's going to happen here. Um, when I go to shade in everything that's greater than the red line, it's actually just all completely overlap. Look at that. Everything I'm shading in right now is actually overlap. And except for the, you know, pink edging that I have there, um, there's no area of this graph that would just be pink. It would all be the teal section or the purple overlap. So, of course, there is a solution here. It's going to be any of those points up top. So, like, a possible solution could be 0, 4, right? It could actually be any point that's also on the red line. So, what I need to show you here is when you have parallel lines, they can either be shaded apart from each other, which is no solution, they could be parallel lines that are both shaded in the same direction going up or the same direction going down, right? So you could have that. Or you can actually have parallel lines that the bottom line shades up and the top line shades down. And so the whole graph is shaded in, but the overlap section is just in the middle. I always feel like that looks pretty cool. Um, so parallel lines, you really can have any kind of situation happen. So it's not always going to be no solution. All right, I've got two word problems for us to take a look at. The first one here says Autumn sells boxes of pasta for $2 each and jars of sauce for $3 each. Autumn needs to make at least $12, but has no more than eight boxes and cans combined. So I'm going to let X represent boxes and Y is going to represent jars. So remember, when we set up an inequality, a system rather, all the money goes together in one um, equation, or in this case, inequality. So $2 per box plus $3 per jar, it says she needs to make at least $12. So that means she wants to make $12 or more. So that's going to be greater than or equal to 12. And then the second inequality will be about the amount. So it says she has no more than 8 so no more than eight would mean the amount of boxes plus the amount of jars is less than or equal to eight. That's what no more than means. So now we're going to go ahead and we're going to graph this system. So 2x plus 3y equals 12. So if I look at this first inequality here um, and I want to plot it, let's say I don't want to rearrange it. Let's say I just find my intercepts. So my x-intercept would be 6, 0 my y-intercept would be 0, 4. So 6, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 0, 4. If you were to rearrange the equation, um, that's another thing you can do. 
and it, it does say greater than or equal to, so I'm going to shade this in. And this is, of course, um, X stands for number of boxes. If I want to highlight my line, label my line, the Y axis is number of jars. And it does say that it's going to be greater than it. So um, I need to shade in. So any of these ordered pairs right now represent, you know, how many boxes of pasta and how many jars of sauce she would need to sell in order to make at least $12. But we do have this second inequality, this restriction. So now if I go to graph the second inequality uh, and I want to, again, find my intercepts, uh, the intercepts are going to be 8, 0, and 0, 8. Of course, I can rearrange this inequality, get y by itself and do that. This is just another good method. So 8, 0, and 0, 8. It's also a solid line. And look, it says less than or equal to. So I need to make sure from that line now, I shade in everything less than it. Oh, and I got my colors mixed up here, I just noticed. I'm going to switch over to yellow. I don't know. Just so we see the pink and the yellow um, overlap and make orange. So that overlap section now is where uh, the solution is. So any ordered pair in this overlap could be part of the solution. So let's say I found this ordered pair here of two, four. Let me switch over to my pencil. This point here at two, four. That could be a possible solution. 2, 4. So that means two boxes and four jars. So let's say has no more than eight boxes and cans combined. That should say jars, my apologies. Um, so that works. So this is only six items. Two boxes of pasta. So two times two is four. Uh, four jars. Four times three is 12. So four plus 12 is 16. So she's making $16. And so that would be a solution. And any ordered pair in that orange or reddish section would give you a solution that is good. Okay. Other problem here. Nathan makes $10 an hour delivering pizzas and $5 an hour babysitting his sister. He wants to make at least $40. And his mom said he has to work for less than six hours a week. So we're going to call X um, the pizza hours, and we're going to call Y babysitting hours. So remember, all the money goes into one inequality together. So $10 an hour delivering pizzas plus $5 an hour babysitting it says he wants to make at least $40. So that amount has to be greater than or equal to 40 Second inequality would be that the amount of hours delivering pizza and the amount of hours babysitting has to be less than six. So now if I want to go ahead and graph that, the intercepts for this inequality would be four, zero. The y-intercept would be zero, eight, right? If I plug in zeros for either one, it's they're pretty quick to find. So four, zero, zero, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's a greater than or equal to, so I'm going to go ahead, connect these, and then shade above it. This time I'll do the right colors. So this is where, you know, all of the amounts of hours he could work um, delivering pizzas and babysitting so that he gets at least $40. But again, he does have this restriction now. His mom says he can only work for up to six total hours, which seems like nothing. It really isn't anything. Um, but my intercepts there would be 6, 0, and 0, 6. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and then 6 out here. Now this one does say less than, so that means it is going to be a dashed line. Remember, anything on the dashed line is not part of the solution. It says less than, so I need to make sure from that point I shade in everything below it right? Because that's where y gets less than. You see, I have this really slim area of possible situations. So Nathan doesn't really have many options of the amounts of time he can work. But something I definitely see is this one here. So 4, 1, right? So that means four um, hours delivering pizza and one hour babysitting. 
that would be enough. Uh, because if he does four hours of pizza delivering pizza, uh, delivering pizzas, that's $40 right there. Plus an additional hour babysitting that is five hours, which is $45. So that meets both requirements and any point that's there does work. So you can see five one, um, actually is not my dash line. I got to fix that five one would not work because think about it. Five one adds up to six and he's got to work less than six hours. So it doesn't really have many options. Uh, he could do four zero. He could do three two. Um, he could do five zero, but that's pretty much it for full hours. So not too many options. I hope this video was good for you. Thank you so much for watching.